Marijuana, scientifically known as cannabis, is one of the most interesting plants to have ever existed. All throughout history, it has been known for its multiple uses, but nowadays, many people typically only associate it with one specific use, as a recreational drug. So let's dive into the science behind marijuana and hopefully shed some light on the context of this plant. Marijuana first shows up in the archaeological record around 37 million years ago, ranging from modern-day Kazakhstan to the eastern Himalayas. The plant evolved to make use of the chemical THC as a defense mechanism against plant-eating animals due to its extremely unpleasant taste and psychoactive effects that all of its potential predators are susceptible to. Humans started using the plant within the last 8,000 years, initially eating its seeds as a food source, which are quite nutritious. Nutritious. It was later discovered that the plant's stem could be used to make high-quality fibers due to being tough and rot-resistant. These fibers are made out of cellulose and have been used to make durable items, ranging from clothing and rope to paper and bow strings, for thousands of years. And we know this because many products made out of cannabis have survived all the way to today. Being used in societies ranging from Spain all the way to Taiwan before finding its way into the Americas with the Europeans. When it comes to the psychoactive properties of marijuana, it is made possible due to the aforementioned tetrahydrocannabinol or THC. THC works by mimicking the effects of pre-existing neurotransmitters in our brain, known as cannabinoids. Cannabinoids are present in all animals, fish, reptiles, mammals, you name it. They work by altering the activity of neurotransmitters within the brain, which as a result, causes the brain to function at a steady rate. In the case of THC, it will cause specific regions of the brain that deal with thoughts, imagination, and perception to heighten to a point where whatever your senses pick up and or you are thinking about will become more enjoyable and interesting but it also has the potential to cause anxiety in people not used to it. It should also be mentioned that marijuana has multiple cannabinoids, besides THC, that can affect you differently. More on that later. THC specifically mimics the effects of the naturally occurring cannabinoid and neurotransmitter, anandamide. Your body uses anandamide throughout the nervous system by functioning to regulate hunger, sleeping, and pain relief. In high quantities, it is known to impair working memory, as well as influence signals that can result in epilepsy prevention. Anandamide is also involved in the immune system and has even been shown to inhibit breast cancer cells from multiplying. Given that THC mimics this naturally occurring neurotransmitter, studies show that it behaves as if your system was having an increased amount of anandamide, for the most part, which is why many of the symptoms of marijuana use are directly related to the effects that anandamide has on people, such as sleepiness and muscle relaxation, hunger, influencing your immune system, and so on. Though it should be mentioned, marijuana does have the potential to be addictive, but simply saying it's addictive can be misleading. Coffee can be addictive, sugar can be addictive, so can heroin and alcohol. But it would be crazy to say all four of those things create the same kind of dependency, or the withdrawals experienced are the same, because they're not. Cases of marijuana dependency are extremely low, lower than alcohol dependency cases and cases involving heroin. About 9% of marijuana users claim to have developed a dependency on marijuana, in contrast to 15% of alcohol users and 30% of heroin users who had developed dependencies on their respective substances. As a comparison, about 13% of coffee users have developed a dependency, where without it they became too sick to even go into work. With that, unlike alcohol or heroin, there has never been a recorded case of someone overdosing on marijuana. In studies attempting to find the limit of THC consumption, scientists gave rats over 40,000 times the dose needed to get them high, and the rats only fell asleep for three days and woke up perfectly fine. But even with all that aside, there has been a lot of medical interest in medical marijuana. It has been known to help increase appetite and reduce the vomiting in individuals with AIDS or HIV and individuals experiencing chemotherapy. It can help individuals with insomnia, high amounts of stress, and chronic pain due to it being an effective anti-inflammatory substance. And it helps individuals who suffer from epilepsy and even Tourette's syndrome. 
but it's a common misconception that all marijuana is the same, or just about the THC. Marijuana has at least 85 different cannabinoids, with each having the ability to impact a person differently. In order to capitalize on specific components that could be used, farmers have developed so many different strands of marijuana that there are more breeds of marijuana than there are dog breeds both for recreational and medical purposes. Most medical marijuana strands used for helping people with specific disorders often have the THC bred out of them by humans selectively breeding different types of marijuana that contain higher concentrations and lower concentrations of specific cannabinoids. People suffering from epilepsy often are prescribed marijuana-based medicines with the THC bred out of them and high concentrations of a chemical known as CBD or cannabidiol. Clinical trials have shown that this is extremely effective in controlling seizures and has saved the lives of multiple people. An example being then six-year-old Charlotte Figgy, whose parents were told she was going to die due to her constant suffering from grand mal seizures after dozens of different medications failed to help control her over 300 seizures a week. As a last resort, her parents obtained medical marijuana designed to help seizures, and the results were astounding. Medical marijuana has given Charlotte the ability to actually have a life. She now only suffers from two to three seizures a week, which is a drastic improvement. So right now, there is a massive push by the medical community to make use of specific cannabinoids found in marijuana. This is to help us combat health problems because it has the potential to be used to synthesize drugs that can help people who suffer from issues that can easily be prevented or controlled by increasing the amount of cannabinoids within their system that don't necessarily involve THC. Not to mention farmers, along with industries, who are also interested in being able to use the fibers to make products, such as clothing, and so forth. So whether or not marijuana is something you're interested in for recreational purposes, it could still be something we take interest in, for medical purposes, and save a few lives in the process.